Welcome to Physics 350 Fluid Mechanics. We will start today with a very um, fundamental concept in mathematical physics and in fluid mechanics, and that is the Cartesian tensor. And Cartesian is named after a famous French philosopher and mathematician, René Descartes. At the time, it was bangs, goatee, and wavy hair, plus a strong collar. So, what is a tensor? It's a fundamental geometric object in n-dimensional space. And what it describes is best illustrated by looking at specific examples. So a zeroth order tensor is called a scalar. And scalar quantities in this class that we will come across are typically presented as fields. And for example, they are pressure P, temperature T, and density rho. So this here is the Greek letter rho. The next order up for tensors is the first order tensor. And this is a mathematical object that you will have come across many times, which is the vector. Vector fields in our class here are typically the position vector x, the velocity vector u or v typically, or for example acceleration such as acceleration due to gravity, g. So if we zoom in here, this half error is what I use in this class to denote vector. Now, the thing that you probably won't have come across up to now in your career is the second order tensor. And slightly confusingly, this is the thing that we typically call a tensor, especially in this class. And mathematically, a second order tensor is given as a matrix. And the standard example that I'll give you here for a second order tensor is the stress tensor. And the way I denote a tensor is this double underline. Yeah, that is what I use for the second order tensor. And this particular example is the stress tensor. And in our class here, as a side note, we will only consider 3D or even less spatial systems. So all these zeroth order, first order, second order tensors that we'll talk about will always be in the framework work of 3D, i.e. the world as we experience it, nothing crazy mathematically and abstract. So let's go into a little bit more detail here. What is a scalar? Well, for example, let's take the scalar temperature field, T, which is a function of x, the position, and time, T. So temperature, T, is defined at any point in space and time, and it only has a magnitude, which means a value, a number that describes how large it is, and it has no direction. And we'll see that this is what sets it apart from a vector. So consider some domain at a given point in time. So here t is t0. You have two spatial dimensions, x1 on the horizontal, x2 on the vertical. 
and you have a bunch of particles flowing around here. Imagine this is just like the surface of your table or whatever. And at every point, you assume that a temperature T can be defined. And the temperature T at this point here is fully described by some value x1, some value x2, and time t0. The position x is described by this pair x1, x2, and then t is defined as t0 here. Now, as time progresses, for example, you might heat up this table, shine a light on it, or burn a candle, and you will find yourself at time t1, which is your original time t0, plus a change in time, delta t. Again, your spatial dimensions haven't changed, and if I look at the same spot here, this, your temperature is defined now as temperature again at x1, x2, but now it is defined at t1, which is t0 plus delta t. And if you've heated up your tabletop, then now t at t1 will be bigger than t at t0. But the main point here is that t is a scalar and it has no direction, it just has a magnitude. Yeah, so maybe in the beginning, T was 20 degree Fahrenheit, and now T is 30 degree Fahrenheit. And so your temperature is completely and utterly described by this one number. And why do I keep harping on about this? Well, vectors function differently. So if you instead have a vector, say vector x, then they have a magnitude, a size, but it also has a direction. And while the scalar, regardless of the dimensions of your space, scalar only has one element, regardless of dimensions, a vector has n elements, in an n-dimensional space. So, for example, in 3D, we need three elements that form an orthogonal basis, which allows us to describe any arbitrary vector in your 3D space. And so, let's think of a 3D space that has dimensions 1, 2, 3, and a arbitrary position vector x. So this is your position vector x. Then x can always be represented as a sum of three linearly independent basis vectors. So here we would have basis vector e1, Basis vectors in our class will be written as E, typically, E2, and E3. And our x vector can be written as a vector, can be written as a sum of a vector x1 in the direction of E1, x2 in the direction of E2, and x three in the direction of E3. So here we have x equals x1 times E1 plus x2 E2 plus x3 E3. In matrix notation we write x as a column vector with three elements, x1, x2, x3, and the decomposition into basis vectors is written as 
x1 times 1, 0, 0, plus x2 times 0, 1, 0, plus x3 times 0, 0, 1. 1, 0, 0 is your basis vector e1, this is e2, and this is e3. And if we write this in the text, where we don't want to take up three rows of text, this can often be written with parentheses as x is x1, x2, x3. Now note that this is not the same as the transpose of a vector. Yeah, so here we have the round parentheses, but for vectors we also have a transpose, and a transpose means that you switch the rows and columns, and so x transpose, superscript t means transpose, is a row vector given as x1, x2, x3, yeah, which is distinct from your column vector, that's your typical vector, x1, x2, x3. So now you can imagine what the second order tensor looks like. We've done the zeroth order tensor, which is just a number, and then we have done the first order tensor, which is a vector, which is a number with a direction, and now we have the second order tensor. And the second order tensor we will describe in more detail in the next video.